The main difference between particle and rigid body equilibrium in terms of how we think of them for statics analysis is that we care about the rotation of the rigid body. A particle, defined as a particle for statics purposes, can't really rotate because all the forces are sort of located on the particle itself. But in the case of a rigid body, even though you might have two forces that yield a static, or in other words, a non-accelerating state, the location of the forces might be causing the body to rotate, or more importantly, to have an angular acceleration. In this case, the body would not be in a state of equilibrium. It is for this reason that besides the sum of forces being zero in the three orthogonal directions, we will check for the rotation of the body. In practical terms for a static's course, this is what is known as the sum of moments. Additionally, just like we do the sum of forces in a particular direction, x, y, or z, we say a sum of moments about point A, for example, to check the rotation of the rigid body with A as the point of reference. To calculate any moment about a point, we will define two concepts. The first is the line of action of a force. This is just a line, not a vector or segment, which means it has an infinite length that passes on top and in parallel to the vector of the force. The second is the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to the line of action. The moment would be defined as the product between that distance and the magnitude of the force. In terms of vectors, what we want is the cross product of the force vector and the radius of the rotation but we'll cover that in detail in a later lecture. The direction of a moment will be considered positive if the rotation caused by a single force would cause the body to rotate counterclockwise. Notice that in this case, both loads P, orange and purple, are trying to make the body rotate counterclockwise. In this case, we can say that both loads are generating positive moments. The direction of the moment will be considered negative if the rotation caused by that force would cause the body to rotate clockwise. This convention results from the use of the right-hand rule. A counterclockwise rotation would yield a positive linear vector coming out of the screen and therefore positive. And a clockwise rotation would yield a negative linear vector coming into the screen and therefore negative. If you think of the moment as a cross product, once again, you would be using the right-hand rule to find the resulting vector coming out or into the screen with the exact same results. Clockwise negative, counterclockwise positive. The sum of moments means that we need to add up the moments generated by each and every force vector. Adding them, but being aware that some of them might be negative because of their rotation direction, just like a sum of forces adds all forces in a particular direction, and yet some of them can be negative forces because of the direction of the vector. In this case shown, and assuming that the distance from A to both loads is just R, the sum of moments would show a total value of 2PR, which is not zero, and therefore we can conclude that the body is not in equilibrium. Besides the moments caused by the forces, external couples and reaction moments should always be added to the sum of moments. The couple is the resultant of having something like this example, where two parallel and opposing forces, equal in magnitude, do not share a line of action and are therefore causing rotation only, no resulting force in any direction. This means that they can sometimes be shown as a circular vector that indicates a moment magnitude and a direction, again, counterclockwise for positive and clockwise for negative. The reaction moments are caused by physical restrictions to a body and they are usually located around the point about which you're writing the sum of moments and they can be displayed as a curved vector just like the external couples. Of course, you would also add the moments caused by the external forces, if any. These physical restrictions are most commonly walls, but in general, they are any fixed surface that indicates that the point of contact between the bodies will not allow the rotation that, for example, a hinge or a fulcrum would allow. If there is a hinge or a fulcrum, then there is no reaction moment. If there is a wall or some other physical restriction to the rotation, then there is a reaction moment and part of the statics analysis should be finding it. The set of equations you'll use to find reaction forces or reaction moments can be summarized into a sum of forces, two sum of forces if you have a 2D problem, or three if it's 3D, and at least one sum of moments about one point, or if there's more than one, 
about different points within the system. However, for most statics problems, one sum of moments will be enough. Additionally, for most statics problems as well, you'll begin with a sum of moments since with it, you can get rid of one or more unknown forces. For example, starting with a sum of forces in the y direction would not allow us to solve for one of the two unknown variables. However, if we start with a sum of moments and choosing a point that is located on the line of action of one of the unknown vectors, we are effectively getting rid of one of the variables, p for the sum of moments about a, since the perpendicular distance from a to the line of action of p is zero, and f for the sum of moments about c, since the perpendicular distance from C to the line of action of F is zero, and with the resulting equations, we can solve individually for the variables we need. Alternatively, we could have written the sum of moments about B, and use that together with the sum of forces in the Y direction to have a system of two equations and two unknowns, but that's a slightly longer process. In many practical cases, you'll often find external loads that are not vertical or horizontal. The process to find and the definition of a moment about a point will still hold true in these cases. You can draw the line of action of an inclined force vector and with it geometrically find the perpendicular distance to it from the point you're calculating the moment about. However, this often results in additional steps that you're not constantly using in a static course. For this reason, it is often advantageous to split the given force vector into its components draw the line of action of each component, which will be vertical and horizontal lines, and with those, find the perpendicular distance from the point for calculating the moment to those lines, which will also be vertical and horizontal lines and therefore distances that are much easier to find. Notice that in this case, the perpendicular distance from A to the line of action of Fx is zero, so the sum of moments about A only has one term due to Fy negative because it's a clockwise rotation and simpler to find the value of than the r distance in green. Notice that in this case all you're doing is finding components of a force by using the trig functions that you constantly use for everything else statics related. Since not all rigid bodies would be in equilibrium with the given loads only, but they might still be in equilibrium if we consider the reaction forces and moments that are not explicitly shown, the last thing to understand for the structures we'll be analyzing is the different types of supports. There's more than the supports that we'll show here, but let's look at some of the most common ones, starting with the pin connectors, which allow the member to freely rotate without any resistance while keeping the location of the pin in place. This means that for pin connectors, the sum of forces in the x and y directions and z if the structure is 3D will allow reaction forces Rx, Ry, and Rz to exist in the x, y, and z axes. Sure, under some circumstances where the external loads cancel out, for example the y reaction here, or when there are no external loads in one direction, for example the x axis, the reaction forces can be zero. However, because the pin allows the member to rotate, there will be no reaction moment at pin connectors. Rollers, the second type of supports, besides allowing the member to freely rotate like pins, will also allow movement in one direction. This doesn't necessarily mean that the structure will be moving or accelerating. Just like with the reaction moments in the pin connectors, it only means that there will not be a reaction force in the reaction where the little wheelies are aligned towards. Additionally, the reaction force in the perpendicular direction will only exist as a typical normal force from physics in the direction from the surface to the body. If the roller and member are being pulled away from the surface, the reaction force will not magically pull it back to the surface. And since we see the same hinge-like piece as the pin connectors, there won't be any reaction moment either. Finally, there is the fixed supports. These supports will prevent the member to translate in any direction, so there's reaction forces in all axes if needed, just like the pin connectors, but most importantly, there will be a reaction moment that prevents the member from rotating. To make math procedures easier, we'll use the same suggestion that we followed for internal or reaction forces and assume that unknown moments, such as these reaction moments, are always positive. Therefore, they have a counterclockwise direction. So if there's a force that is trying to make the member rotate, a reaction moment will exist that counteracts that rotation. So the sum of forces is zero. 
Worth pointing out here now is that beams or members that are protruding or otherwise fixed at a wall like this are usually referred to as cantilever beams or in general just cantilevers. These three main types of supports and understanding why the reaction types exist in each case, which will build some common sense into how you analyze different structures, serve as a good base to identify the reaction loads that exist or not exist in other types of supports we didn't cover here today. Let's take a look at an example where we make use of what we've learned today. For this setup shown, what are the reaction forces and reaction moment at A? Before watching the solution to this problem, try pausing this video and solving it yourself. Let's begin with today's main topic, the reaction moment at A. The sum of moments about A will include the reaction moment A, which following the suggestion will be assumed positive, and the moments caused by the three forces F1, F2, and F3. Since all forces are causing a clockwise rotation, all three terms will be negative. However, we already covered why finding the perpendicular distance to a slanted force vector is much more complicated than finding vertical and horizontal distances to horizontal and vertical loads respectively. For this reason, we'll find the x and y components of each force, multiply each by the perpendicular distance to point A, for example, 2 meters from A, to the y component of F1, or 4 meters from point A to the line of action of the x component of F3, and 5 meters to the y component of F3, and finally, depending on the counterclockwise or clockwise rotation. MA assumed to be positive, F1y causing a clockwise rotation, as does F2y, counterclockwise for F3x, and clockwise for F3y. The component of the forces whose line of action pass through A, like F1x or F2x, will have a distance of zero and therefore the sign doesn't matter. Since point A is fixed and the structure cannot rotate, we know that the sum of moments about point A is equal to zero. Solving for the reaction moment MA and using the appropriate units yields a value of 2.53 kilonewton meters. Writing a sum of forces in the y and x direction is pretty straightforward, of course without forgetting the reaction forces at A, also assumed to be positive. These equations allow us to solve for Ax and Ay. Notice that the value for Ax is negative, which means that the reaction force Ax can be drawn as a vector going left with a magnitude of 275 newtons. For more examples related to rigid body equilibrium, as well as the links to the different topics of the statics course, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.